After all these years, Hyrule is one seamless and open world. But contrary to our initial assumptions, this game is not primarily about the massive overworld, but a genius physics engine, which changes everything for the Zelda franchise and indeed gaming in general. But how can they run this gravity-defying experience without crippling the aging Wii U? As usual, the answer for Zelda lies in its art style. But to see the correlation between the game's mechanics and its art style, we need to get a closer look inside Breath of the Wild. Throughout development, series producer Mr. Eiji Aonuma has repeatedly stated that the inspiration behind the art of Breath of the Wild has been Japanese animations. This comes as no surprise, seeing the clear similarities between Breath of the Wild and many anime classics, such as the Studio Ghibli masterpiece Princess Mononoke. This anime-inspired style is the driving force behind the game's visuals, but on a different note, Bill Trennan specifically mentioned during the E3 Treehouse livestream that the style is evocative of a style of French painting called en plein air, meaning in the full or open air. So in order to get this crucial detail correct, we have brought Artsy Omni to give us a more professional explanation. En plein air is not as much a style as it is a methodology. It involves the artist painting outdoors to get the truest sense of the colors and shapes of his subject, usually a landscape or nature scene. While many paintings in this style are more expressionistic than what we see in Breath of the Wild, it's still a fitting reference given the game's open-air theme. Because conditions are constantly changing when painting outdoors, painters would often have to paint quickly, capturing only the essential aspects of a subject. This kind of simplification is a key element in the visuals of Breath of the Wild. But this was far from all the information supplied by Bill Trin during the livestream. He also mentioned that this particular style is meant to replicate a type of paint called gouache. Gouache is similar to watercolor as both are water-based paints. The main difference is that watercolor is more transparent while gouache is very opaque. To demonstrate this difference, let's compare the in-game visuals of Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword's expressionistic style is very reminiscent of watercolor, with its lighter pastel colors and loose textural qualities. Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, is a mixture of cell shading with a very rich, painterly look for the environments. This is something that would be difficult to achieve with watercolor, but is more easily attainable using gouache. This duality of cell shading and painterly environments is also typical among Japanese anime. In a lot of anime, the environments are static paintings with a high level of textural detail, while the animated characters are restricted to only a few colors to make them easier to animate. But artistic inspirations aside, what is perhaps most interesting is how the art style is designed to complement the gameplay. Mr. Aonuma once stated that when taking inspiration from games like Skyrim, he paid careful attention to the emotions that the gameplay evoked, and wanted to replicate those emotions in a way that feel uniquely like Zelda. This is clearly evident by the fact that Breath of the Wild not only encourages exploration of the world, but also what you can accomplish in that world through the most important feature of this game, the sophisticated physics engine. Which among many things includes ragdoll and weather physics. This game screams screw realism by encouraging the player to experiment with the engine and world, defining a brand new Zelda experience with unconventional features such as rolling fucking rocks, cutting trees, free climbing, doing 1080s while shield surfing, hunting, flurry rushing, using the Sheikah runes and even setting fire to grass and then using the updraft created by the flames to ascend with your paraglider. Yep. This world looks kind of flammable! Flammable! Oh, I like flammable! However, the biggest revolution in the Zelda franchise comes in form of the Sheikah Slate and its various runes, which change the way we solve puzzles, approach combat, and interact with natural obstacles and the world itself. Based on what we've seen so far, we know that after completing the Sheikah Shrines in the opening area of the Great Plateau, we will be armed with four runes. The first is Magnesis, which manipulates all freestanding metallic objects. 
Using magnesis, you can move long planks of metal to create makeshift bridges to otherwise inaccessible areas, or just drop heavy metal objects onto unsuspecting enemies. Even better, you can combine the two by placing a plank and dropping a massive boulder on it for a functioning link catapult. But Bill Trendon has teased what is perhaps the most amazing feat of magnesis, creating your very own hoverboard by stacking two metal planks. Seriously, what can't you do in this game? Next is Cryonis which allows you to create ice columns from water in order to elevate objects and enemies, or reach otherwise unreachable areas. However, the craziest rune so far has to be the Stasis rune. Oh, the possibilities. This rune temporarily suspends time in physics for an object, allowing you to use repeated weapon strikes to build up kinetic energy in the stasis-locked object. Once the stasis is released, the built-up energy can catapult objects as large as giant boulders far into the horizon. The possibilities seem to be endless when it comes to the runes of the Great Plateau. But as we all know, there is a whole giant world out there to explore, with over 100 shrines and possibly dozens of additional runes. With all of the crazy things you can do in this game, let's consider the implications for the game's art style, which again should reinforce and complement the gameplay. The core mechanics in this game are all very whimsical and unrealistic, so to encourage the player to willingly suspend their disbelief, the game frames these actions in the context of a less realistic art style. This way the developers have more artistic freedom to create nonsensical or quirky animations without it looking jarring to the player. In other words, the moderately cartoony style of Breath of the Wild makes unrealistic animations and situations feel more appropriate. The animation is snappy and somewhat exaggerated to make actions clear and readable, as well as responsive. From a practical standpoint, the art style also demands fewer polygons and less texture resolution. With the game's large seamless world and sophisticated physics engine, the more simplistic art style helps to avoid overloading the Wii U's limited processing power. Difficulties with optimizing this game's physics engine was a primary cause of the two delays moving the game from a 2015 to a 2017 release. In hindsight, this should come as no surprise, as Nintendo had similar struggles when developing the engine for Ocarina of Time, a game that also hit its system in the later half of its life cycle. The Sheikah Slate, with its various runes, is not your typical Zelda gimmick that hampers the gameplay, but a game-defining element that enhances the experience. In many ways, you can say it plays a similar significance to Breath of the Wild as the legendary Gravity Gun did for Half-Life. Reinforced by a well-selected art style, the properties of the Slate shines and sets the stage for an unprecedented Zelda sandbox through the use of something as simple yet revolutionary as a physics engine. As a result, the key to this game is not the massive open air alone, but obviously the joy of non-realistic exploration, which fits well with the overall mechanics and themes of the Shiga Slate, Shrines, and art style of the game. Yes, this is definitely worth the wait of two consecutive delays. With that in mind, we will give you the following choice for the next episode of Inside Breath of the Wild. Do you want us to talk about shrines, dungeons, or a weapon and crafting system? Vote by commenting below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, then please like, share, favorite, comment, and if you do not want to miss any episode in this series, videos on Zelda, Breath of the Wild, or the Nintendo NX, then subscribe to Commonwealth Realm. A big thanks goes to Artsy Omni who joined us this time. Go and check out his channel as well as his new Breath of the Wild font, Hyla Seraph. Link to download it and to subscribe to his channel is on the screen and in the description down below. Hi, this is Ruven Wegner. Many of you have wondered what music the intro is of Inside Breath of the Wild. I composed it, and on my channel Music Proposition you will find many soundtrack renditions for upcoming games, especially Zelda. Until then, enjoy my music in Inside Breath of the Wild. And we will see you girls and guys soon.